Hey, Steve. Hey, Dee Dee. We're here. We're back. Okay. Oh, we didn't say HCTV at all tonight. It's HCTV. I like to say that. Okay, so let's go. Uh, which one should we do first? Um, um, I like everything, actually, so I don't really care. Let me get this out of the way. That's a wealth fetish. Do you want me to do it real quick first or no? Yeah, if you want to. Okay, show it to them. Now... This oh, the dice on it. That's cool. Yeah, this piece is... You can spread it open if you want. This piece is a lot different than any wealth piece you're going to come across. Here's the deal with this one. Um, this takes many cultures and combines them with a type of voodoo. It's a type. It's not straight up voodoo. This is real jade. As you know, some of you call that the Italian horn. This is the dice of life. The turquoise colored stones are for the Native Americans. And then this, I don't know if this is jade or what that is, but every piece on here is very important. Here's the deal with it. It'll bring you wealth. But it's going to bring you wealth by any means necessary. So if you buy this piece, you need to be very careful with it. Does it work? Absolutely. Could it kill your neighbor off? Yes, it could. Would it make an old relative pass on, leaving you money? Yes, it could. Will it do those things? Not necessarily, but there is a chance that something like that could happen. Could you be walking down the road and a guy that bought a winning lottery ticket get hit by a bus and you pick up the ticket and win? Absolutely. I'm just telling you. I'm not saying everything is bad. I'm just telling you because I have to tell you that by any means necessary. That is how this was created and what it was designed to do. And it is strictly wealth. That's it. All right. Let's go into what you got. Let's move on to the next. Okay. Because you get some interesting stuff here actually. Was that the right? Is that the right? No, no, no. Yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're not on the website <coughs> yet. All right. So let's do this. This is the eight stages of deification. Now get in there, good, because that sparks. Yeah. Oh, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. So basically, there were these. There was this Asian couple. They were husband and wife, and they had their own pyramid built. Move for it them. around, Sam. It was um, an eight-sided pyramid, octagonal pyramid. And on every side of the pyramid, there were these paintings and the inscriptions. Now, scholars have tried, and they said that they've come up with answers for what each one means, but they really haven't, because what each one of the drawings is, is each, you gotta stage, move it around. Sorry, each stage of the deification process. And on the eighth wall is the opening to the sarcophagus where, where they were laid in when they died. Now, when the researchers went back to try to pick up their bones or to find their bones, the bones were gone. And that's because what happened when they were put into the pyramid, <coughs> they were, sorry, I thought you were about to sneeze. Yeah. They were, um, they went through their final and eighth stage of the deification process. And what that did for them was it allowed them to be wholly resurrected in body, flesh, bone form and roam the earth in their deified um, form now what this piece does for you it doesn't kill you off you're not going to have to be buried or anything like that but it brings you the same powers of deification that these ancient people had just from going inside of this pyramid and just from going through these eight stages of deification and that brings to you um, all the powers of the universe all the knowledge it'll allow you to create um, powers for yourself powers for other people um, it, it basically creates you as a living deity here on earth. And that's what that piece does for you. And the circular part is because it's for uh, never ending power, infinite, Im infinite immortality, knowledge, knowledge, it's sterling silver. Um, I don't have the ring sizer here. I do have it. It was actually. here. Here it is. Jammer. Oh, yeah, I call it the jammer. There you go. As you can see. Which one's American? <coughs> Uh, about an eight and a half. I think yeah, I think it's an eight, eight and a half. Eight, eight and a half. Can you show it and see. Oh yeah. You could always wear. So we'll show it one more too. time. On a chain too. If it's yeah, this is for male or female. 
Sterling silver, size eight, eight and a half. Okay. All right, moving right along. Um, which, what's the next one you're down? This is... Oh, I see it. Bring it over. This is the... Um, now, this one's cool. It changes colors, actually. Yes, it does. Am I doing a good job of making it change colors? Yeah, hold it up. <laughs> no, like... No, like down. Like down, closer to the table. Oh. Hold it up now. Yeah, it's starting to change now. It's actually changing while you're holding it. And, okay, let me get the color, what's on the side of it. Okay, all right, tell them about it. All right, so this piece um, was created during an investigation, and um, it come, the powers come from a cave in Peru that was created by what we call the Skull Collector. Now, the Skull Collector lived 1,500 years ago, and he knew that the skull and the brain is where um, the power and, the, and knowledge from the cosmic life force entered into the human body. And so what he would do is he would literally chop people's heads off. I mean, most of them were already dead. They died in battle or something like that. But um, he would chop their heads off and he'd take them back to this cave because he knew that they had knowledge, magic. Some of them did, not all of them. Um, most of them did, actually. But he would um, chop their heads off and keep them in their cave and do his shamanic dance, build a fire and do his shamanic dances around the fire. And what that did was it made these skulls, it forced them to talk to him and they'd tell him. Now they didn't have bodies with them, right? They're just no, they were just skulls. Yeah, yeah he'd chop thought, off yeah. their heads. <laughs> but um, but they spoke to him and they and they told him the powers that they had and the wisdom that they had and the things that they had. And basically what we did was we made... Each a, skull had one certain thing though, right? Right, yeah. E well, some of them more than one, but each skull was different. Each skull said something different. And their speaking was energy. It was pure right, energy. Pure energy. Like just to hear it in your ears was enough to transfer their magic to you, which is why he made them talk to him. Now this piece here um, kind of does the same thing, but it allows you to touch another person and to read their energies to tell what kind of magic, if any, that they have. And if they do have a magic, it allows you to draw their magic, but not in a way that's going to completely um, take their power or magic from them, but it's going to duplicate it and it's going to send it to your brain so that way you have it as well. Okay. All right, what's your next piece? This next piece is... I like this one. Now, this one was... Um, that piece actually belonged to Aleister Crowley. Now it's been, yeah. This is an this is an original piece. It's been passed piece. around through different circles, um, of magicians and sorcerers and stuff like that. But we did end up with it. Now, it basically it's the untold story of Iwas. I'm, am I saying that right? Yeah. I hope so. And that's the spirit that came to Aleister Crowley when he was still on Earth and gave him all the secrets of that religion that he made, um, and. There was one secret, well, there's probably more than one, but one of the secrets that was told to Aleister Crowley that he didn't write down because he didn't want other people to know about it was what was called the Eight Hermetic Doors. Now, these Eight Hermetic Doors aren't actually doors that exist somewhere, but they're secret doors to seek eight secret compartments in our brain, and each of these compartments holds one of the eight original Hermetic powers, and the energy that's in this piece is the energy for you to, it basically serves as the keys to those doors it allows you to open those doors and to feel and to experience those eight hermetic powers now um the hermetic powers are are, are different types of <clears throat> powers one of them for example is blood alchemy another one for example is extreme wealth but there are eight of them and we can't we don't want to tell you all eight of them because that's the whole point of you using this piece is to experience the full enlightenment and to and to get the whole eight powers on your own. It's, it's kind of like a ritual where the whole point is for you to develop the powers and us to not have to tell you. That way you know that you're fully enlightened and you've unlocked all eight doors successfully. Cool. I like that piece. And again, that piece is original. Did belong to him. It's not something that power was put into. It is the original piece. Sure All right, did. what else you got? All right. Uh, actually, did... we better stop, then I'll okay. come back. 